Authorities in Davenport, Iowa are giving Especially an update on the partial apartment building collapse there. Let's listen. And anybody that's been displaced. My heartfelt condolences on behalf of the city go out to those involved. Thank you all for coming. We're a bit over the 36-hour mark now uh, since the beginning of 324 Main partially collapsed. This is an active incident uh, that is very fluid and ever-evolving. Our command staff is coordinating information as it becomes available um, in real time and developing the incident response accordingly. We are consistently evaluating and getting real-time information. I want to first acknowledge also yesterday evening a very happy event. Ms. Lisa Brooks was rescued from the fourth store, fourth story of the building. I am so thankful that she was found safe and alive. The immediate question I know people are asking is how did she get there and why wasn't she found earlier? I am totally transparent with you. I do not know. We do not know, but understand, please, that I and the city is committed to finding out why. I'm going to be um, moving to other speakers here in a moment, but know that I am very interested in that particular issue also. Um, the last few uh, many days, the, um, and especially yesterday, the, the Denport Police Department has been working diligently to account for the known occupants of the building. Chief Blada will speak in a moment uh, on that particular effort. Uh, but at this time, we have five individuals that are still unaccounted for, two of those we believe to be possibly still in the building. We understand that this is an unthinkable situation, especially for the families that are involved and impacted um, by this event. Last night, the Danport Fire Department, Danport Police Department with, met with the families of the two particular unaccounted for folks uh, that we believe might be in the building. Our community stands with this, these families and supports them. And again, my heart goes out to the families of the people that are unaccounted for. We want to update today the community, and thank you for helping with that, on the efforts that have been taken over the last past 36 hours, a lot of work has been done, and you're going to hear about that, and there is a lot of work that remains to be done. We are committed to that work. I'm going to turn this over to Chief Belato in a moment, but understand we are committed. I am so happy to have some of my colleagues here to my left from the City Council and so happy to have the leaders and people that are doing the work that are committed to this. I know there's a lot of discussion about nothing's happening. That is not true, and you're going to hear about that. So thank you. Um, you'll hear from many speakers. So again, please wait to the end. I'll come back up at the end, and then we'll go through a respective way to uh, get all your questions addressed. Chief Blake. Thank you, Mayor. Again, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chief Jeff Blatel, the Danport Police Department. So early on in the incident, um, the Danport Police Department worked with uh, Red Cross, building owners, building property managers, family and friends uh, to compile a list of individuals or possible tenants within the, within the building. Um, we utilized uh, all of our investigative resources and continued to work with not only uh, our local but our state um, and even went door to door to try to um, to work on those efforts to identify and actually locate people. Uh, based on the consolidated information at this time, uh, as the mayor said, we have five that are unaccounted for uh, and two uh, that we have a firm belief that are potentially still in that building. Um, we've utilized every, uh, we continue to attempt to verify every bit of information that we receive and continue to work with the other agencies um, who have information regarding who might be uh, within that list. 
Um, additionally, last night, uh, again, as the mayor said, and I'll confirm, uh, we had a city contingency meet with two families uh, and provide them a personal debrief of where we were at with the situation, what we're doing, and how we can continue to work with this. So, again, this is a tragedy. Um, this is a horrific uh, event that our community has uh, never experienced before. Um, we have a number of individuals within our community that are impacted, uh, people displaced, uh, family members that are still missing. So we ask our community to continue to rally around the families, continue to rally around uh, the process, uh, and we'll continue to provide updates uh, when we can do that. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Chief. Uh, I am Mike Carlston, Fire Chief of Davenport Fire Department. I'd like to provide you a little bit of update of what we have done so far. Uh, as everyone knows, a recap here, a little before five on Sunday, May 28th, the Davenport Fire Department responded to a report of a building collapse. Our crews arrived on scene and found a six floor apartment complex with partial collapse at the rear side of the building. Quickly, our crews began rescue operations within the first hour. Within that first hour, we had seven reported rescues that we had and over a dozen individuals that we are able to help out of the building. We are very thankful for the efforts of law enforcement, Medic EMS, and all the fire agencies for their hard work. This was truly a team effort. It was not just the Davenport Fire Department that made this happen and got in there to make this work. We went through the building. Primary searches were completed throughout the building. We contacted our regional technical rescue team and they responded to the scene to assist with rescue operations. We had over 150 trained, per, per, excuse me, 150 trained professionals, including fire, police, EMS, medical staff, and city staff, respond within the first 12 hours of this incident. These crews coordinate with the Davenport Fire Department, and we quickly began a secondary search of the facility. Through these efforts, a, a eighth victim was located and extricated Due to the nature of her injuries and entrapment, the extrication took an extended period of time. During this time, uh, crews were able to complete a secondary search of the building. We also contacted the Iowa Task Force, I'm sorry, Iowa Task Force One Urban Search and Rescue Team out of Cedar Rapids Division. They responded to the scene with over 25 individuals and assisted with rescue operations. These rescue operations included a second structural and situational evaluation. Part of the Iowa Task Force response included multiple searches throughout the building and the debris pile, with six specially trained service animals checking for live victims and any human remains. Based on the information provided through multiple searches and other methods, including canines, drones, thermal imaging, infrared, and trained rescuers, no confirmed viable signs of life were noted at that time. We continue to evaluate the structural stability of the building and are focused on the investigative aspect of locating unaccounted for individuals. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Amy Anderson. She is a family member of Ryan Hitchcock. Mr. Hitchcock is one of our unaccounted for individuals at this time. I thank you for um, taking my statement and allowing me to speak. Um, first off, I would like to say that this, I, I completely wanted to come and make my voice heard on, um, on behalf of, of Ryan. I was extremely close with him and I would know that he would want what I'm about to say. Um, we did meet with the city last night and did get um, a lot more information and was able to speak through our concerns with them. Um, and in leaving last night, I was completely just kind of mortified about the protests and the people, you know, raising a voice on, and they, and they don't know Ryan. They don't know our family. Um, the city does have a plan and pushing any delays is one more day that he's under there. M making going through all of all of this Ryan wouldn't want anyone else to put their lives at risk to unfortunately somebody who probably has not survived I don't discount that he could be trapped under their miraculous so we've seen some miraculous things and our God is good but 
you know, I, we don't want to see any more families lose their lives or anybody else be injured in trying to remove that rubble and have anything fall. We would like to see the city, what they their plan is to kind of take it out piece by piece. Um, they have given us our word that they are going to um, treat that already collapsed area with sensitivity to the remains that are underneath of there and excavate them as soon as possible and recover them. That's really what we want. We do not want um, a full-on de demolition or a full-on delay um, for that building to even collapse more and put more rubble on top of them, which then would make things longer and more unlikely that there's any survivors underneath of there. So I plead with our community just to let the city do their job. Right now it is an absolute no-win situation, but this is the best plan of attack. And we don't want anyone else hurt. And we just want to recover, you know, our family. So Ryan was, he loved Jesus, and we know he's with the Lord. And we just... Yeah. We just pray that you would respect our family's wishes and what, what he would want. And we do not, absolutely do not want this to escalate into something that gets more intense and more violent. Um, it is the last thing this community needs right now. We just need to be pulling together and focusing on who has already lost, what we can provide them and support the city in their best efforts to take that building down safely and recover what's already underneath of there. It, I just plead with you guys just to stop. Just proceed in love, proceed in giving, proceed in hope and, and support and prayers. And that's what we need. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.